Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to get a green screen effect without having an actual green screen. This lets you use any webcam to create a green screen effect so you can key yourself out. Uh, this is going to be using a piece of software I wrote called Python Green Screen. The link will be in the description. It's a little bit big. Um, it's because I have to pack the APIs and such in there that I use. I use this is created using OpenCV. It's completely open source, so you could download and run it with Python if you had the the requirements and the requirements are listed over here. Um, so to download it, you just download main.exe. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to bring that over here. When you run it and close it for the first time, it will create a green screen settings without any, and this just has numerous settings in it that uh, change the effects in the control panel, which I'm about to show you. So to open it up, you just double click. It's going to open up the control panel and then a little bit afterwards, the green screen. So this is currently keying me out. It, when it opens, it creates a frame of reference, and then if anything changes from that frame of reference, it keys it out. So my hand is obviously different than its original frame of reference, which in this case is the wall and a dream catcher. Uh, so to run through these settings real quick, reset resets the frame of reference, so you see everything disappears there for a second. And, and when I move again, it changes. This over here is a reset timer, so I can't really escape the view of my camera in this room. So to fix that, I changed this to something like, say, five for five seconds. And then I set my headphones down and click reset. And so then that gives me an opportunity to leave the room, let it take a picture of the background, and then come back in the room and have everything keyed out. I did move my chair there, so you can see that over here there is a bit of a, a missing portion, but that's no big deal because I'm not using this for production. Then hide green screen right here is self-explanatory, hides and shows the green screen. This right here isn't self-explanatory, but if you hover over it for long enough, you'll get a tooltip that says select the camera index. You might want to leave this alone. Um, unless you have more than one camera or virtual cameras, this really won't do anything because usually your default camera is your web camera. But if I were to say change this up, it turns into my OBS virtual camera, which isn't in use right now, so it gives me a weird box. But if I turn that back down to zero, it's the first camera in the index, so it's my web camera. Then coming over here, this is just the color of the green screen. This changes in real time. So you can change the color of the green screen to make it so it doesn't match what you're wearing. Or if you want to just like a white background, you could do that, or a black background. It really depends on what you're looking for. I'm just going to go back to green because any other color is unnecessary for me. Threshold here is where it gets tricky. So to use this, you're going to have to have some of the requirements of a green screen. You're going to have to have decent lighting and lack of shadows. So shadows are probably the worst enemy because shadows are still a noticeable difference. So if you have lots of shadows, you have to have a high threshold. And a high threshold usually results in not the best effects. So I usually recommend changing this um, until this like noise you see on the screen, like I'm, I'm, calling, I'm gonna call this, this effect here noise, so it's more self-explanatory. Um, I usually change it until the noise just about disappears and then add about 10. So I had it at 28, which I know is a, a decent effect, 28, 27. Um, and you can also use your arrow keys to change this. Um, I'm just gonna keep it 28. And then down here is like, um, like a smoothing or noise removal and it has a couple options cross rectangle and circle circle is the most taxing in the system i've developed this with the cpu in mind so usually it'll use under five percent but it all depends on this noise removal effect because if you have this at a hundred sure it's going to be quite like smooth i guess if you see like the effect is like a large circle that lets it like key out a little bit of the noise around my body so you, you see there's no bubbles showing up but we're also using almost like 16 percent of our cpu to do that but if i change it to rectangle you'll notice that it goes down a bit and that's because rectangles are much easier to draw but they don't look as nice if you see now i have jaggy edges and there's a big old line instead of a curve so usually I have this set on circle or cross because cross actually also does a pretty decent job except for some oddities like that. Um, but circle on my computer seems to do a good job and usually having it set pretty low because 
it creates a larger effect the higher you go. So I had it set to 17 before, so I'll set it back to 17. And so it creates a pretty decent effect. So that's pretty much a rundown of the controls. I'm going to show you like a use case, which is mixed reality gaming for me because I have a Lenovo Explorer. And a Lenovo Explorer is quite hard to use green screen with because it'll usually um, fail to track because it does use inside out tracking. And I can also just show you this right now by standing up and walking around with my current settings without getting into the mixed reality setup to show you how it how well it works with just the settings I just set up now. So you can see it's pretty damn quick with how fast uh, it, it can key. Like that's pretty much a live feed. Like I'm gonna tap my chair in three, two, one. Like it's pretty real. It's pretty real time, which is my goal with this because a lot of applications that I downloaded would key using your face, so it would look for your face to key out, or it would like look for something that looked like your body, and that takes a lot of work on the system. So as long as you don't have a moving camera, this will work pretty well. So I'm gonna jump into the mixed reality and show you that now. So jumping into the mixed reality portion of things, I'm using OBS virtual camera to take the green screen window capture and push it to live and then just set up live the normal way. Um, there's tutorials out there for that. It's similar to using a connect green screen in that right where you do use the virtual camera to forward to it. Um, as you can see, it's pretty decent results. There's a little bit of keying out on my shirt down there, but it's because I'm really close to the camera. So I walked forward in this portion of the video. I think the results are pretty acceptable. I'd probably stream with this, um, especially because I don't have a green screen. There's only a couple errors and I could fix those um, after watching this by turning down some of the noise removal settings because you can see by my ear it's really spotty. But otherwise it works pretty well and there's not too much latency, which is something that I really wanted to make sure didn't happen in the software as previously mentioned. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.